It's fallen again. It's almost 30% lower than 12 months ago, and the last time levels were this low was 13 years ago. That's right, the number of properties available for sale in Perth has fallen to 5,885 at the end of May. Despite 11 interest rate rises, demand hasn't slowed, and homes are selling in a median of 12 days. Now, this is the fastest median time on market we've seen since we started keeping records back in 1998, and it has only been recorded once before in April 2021. Now, despite another rate rise this month, we expect demand to remain strong. CWA's population is growing and people are choosing to buy established homes rather than tackle the rental market. Increasing costs and ongoing delays in the building industry are also people are seeing people buy rather than build. Now, the Real Estate Institute Western Australia CEO, Kath Hart, said that sales had outpaced the number of properties coming to the market for the past two months, which was seeing the number of homes available for sale on river.com plunge. The number of sales each week has been 15% higher than the number of weekly new listings since mid-April, she said. And since 2010, sales have usually been 15 to 30% lower than new listings. For sales to be this much higher than new listings is unusual and has only happened a few times in the past 13 years and never for two months in a row. So if this continues, we can expect to see the number of properties for sale to decline further. Now, Despite the drop in the number of properties available for sale, Ms. Hart says there's no need for buyers to be concerned new properties were still coming onto the market in reasonable numbers. We did see the number of new listings in April fall, but this was expected. See, people are generally thinking more about the various holidays during April than putting their home up for sale. Numbers picked up again in May, but they're not May, I should say, but are not expected to rise significantly in the next few months, as they tend to be lower in winter when traditionally uh, our sales start to increase as we move into spring. The speed at which homes are selling is keeping the number of properties for sale low, and I don't think people need to be worried about missing out. Properties are still coming onto the market, it just takes patience and persistence, and you've got to move fast when they do. Now, houses remain the most popular with buyers, with the number of houses available for sale falling below 2,700, and the last time they were this low was April 2010. Sales activity was greatest in the $500 to $1 million price bracket, and the $1 million plus range remained fairly steady, but sales numbers did decline under $500,000. All right, let's talk numbers for the Perth property market. And if you want to know how your suburb is doing, then post in the comments below and I'll let you know. Perth's property values are holding up well despite 11 interest rate increases in the past 12 months. CoreLogic's Perth Home Value Index increased 1.3% in May and 2.4% over the past three months. And while all major capital city markets have improved recently, Perth and Adelaide are the only two to show growth year on year, and Perth is the only capital city where dwelling values have returned to record highs. Now, according to Reba.com, the top performing suburbs for house price growth in May were Hillary's, up 5.8% to $1.1 million. Kinross was up 2% to $632,500, and Hallshead was up 1.9% to $540,000. Secret Harbour was up 1.8% to $540,000, and Melville was up 1.3% to just over a million bucks. Now, Parmelia, Seville Grove, Warnbrook, Gold. Golden Bay and Bryford all recorded over 1% growth. And according to Reba.com, the fastest selling suburbs were Seville Grove at five days, Armidale, Brabham, Butler, Coolangup, Greenfields, Hilbert and Port Kennedy at six days, and Padbury and Palmyra at seven days. Now with the exception of Padbury and Palmyra, these suburbs have median house prices below the Perth median, with Armidale the cheapest at $320,000. So while sales activity may have slowed in the lower price bracket, these figures suggest people are still looking for the more affordable homes and moving quickly when they find them. Turning our attention to Perth's rental market. Perth's median dwelling rent price was 550 bucks per week for May. This is unchanged from April, but $20 higher, almost 4% higher than three months ago, and $80 higher than 12 months ago. The median weekly uh, house rent price fell from 575 to 565 in May, while the median weekly unit rent remained unchanged at 500 bucks a week. Now, according to Reba.com, the suburbs that saw the most growth in their median rent were North Fremantle up 40% to $1,050 a week, Nedlands up 39% to $900 a week, Shenton Park up 30% to $750 a week, Apple Cross was up 25% to $688 a week, and Chewett Hill up 24% to $550 a week. Now, there were 1,969 properties for rent on Reba.com at the end of May. This is almost 2% lower than April and almost 14% lower than a year ago. 
Rental listings were slightly above $2,000 for a few weeks during May, but have dropped again. The rental market remains extremely tight and under current conditions, we expect to see rental listings hover around these levels for the rest of the year. There may be some slight relief for tenants with members reporting strong interest from Eastern States investors, uh, particularly in the areas below the median house price. And interestingly, some developers are also noting that Eastern State investors are buying blocks of land. However, of course, if they plan to build, it will take some time to throw through, I should say, to the rental market. Now, also, while there's some legislative uncertainties, uh, this has been um, the reason why investors have been leaving the market in the past few years. We now have direction on the reforms for the Residential Tenancies Act, so investors and potential investors can now move forward with more confidence. Lastly, guys, it took a median of 15 days to lease a rental in May. And this was one day faster than April, but one day slower than three months ago. And Rebo.com showed the suburbs with the fastest median leasing times were Seville Grove, Cannington, Port Kennedy, and Secret Harbour, all at nine days. Banksia Grove, Belmont, and Carlisle at 10 days. And Bayswater, Burswood, and Forest Field at 11 days. Well, guys, that is all from me today. Now, please don't forget to like, comment, and share this video. And follow or subscribe wherever you're seeing this. Have a great week, and remember, only one thing in life that makes a difference. That's action. Thanks a lot. Bye for now.